Hopefully everyone has had a fantastic time today. Um, I, this is what, the, the third open source uh, software forum? And um, every year just gets bigger, every year just gets better. Um, personally, I think it's one of the preeminent, uh, you know, even though it's focused on FinTech and stuff like that, I think everybody who just wants to some sort of inkling about what open source is about, this is, a, this is perfect. So for the next 10 minutes, I'll be talking to you a little bit about why you should contribute back to open source. Uh, hopefully you'll get some, uh, some rationale and some reason and some energy to actually start that contribution comp, uh, process. One thing I don't want to have people walk away from is this idea that uh, consumption and contribution are somehow mortal enemies, that you have to have one including with the other. That's certainly not the case, even though, at least in my opinion, if something is important to you enough that you want to consume the software, then you should also... Um, I got it? Okay, okay, perfect. Oh, okay, let's see. Yes, okay. Um, so I don't want people to have that, that, that necessary feeling, okay? What is it that really drives people to contribute? Well, one thing you have to remember is that depending on the license that, of the software that you're using, sometimes you may not have a choice. For example, if you're using software which is under a copyleft license, okay, GPL, AGPL, something like that, then quite frankly, you have to give back. If you're doing anything that remotely smells of distribution or software as a service with AGPL, then you are required to give stuff back. You really don't have a choice in the matter. You can't just say, ooh, man, this is really, really sensitive to us or this is our intellectual property. I don't want to do it. If it's under copyleft, you have to. That's part of the license. That is part of the agreement that you made when you use that. But what now if you have a permissive license? What happens if the software you're consuming is uh, Apache V2 or MIT or BSD or something like that? Well, I'll give you a little hint. It's okay if you don't contribute back, okay? We wrote those licenses specifically so you don't have to give back if you don't want to. Of course, we would prefer you to give that back, and I will give you the reasons and the rationale and the, and the, the go-to mission on why you should contribute back. But it's okay, it's okay. It's one of the things that bothers me so much about this whole hoo-ha that's going on in the open source world nowadays with uh, people complaining that there is a large company using open source and not contributing back. That's the license of the software they're using, okay? It certainly isn't enough to warrant the idea of scrapping the open source definition and trying to figure out something else. So why? Why should you give software back? What is in it for you to contribute back? Well, first of all, it's kind of like the right thing to do. As I said before, if you are consuming software and they're asking you to give stuff back, then maybe you should. Maybe it is not that hard of a thing to give some things back in thanks in appreciation for the other work that's going on out there, okay? It's saving you time, it's saving you resources. It's just the right thing to do. And in some companies, that is enough. That moral drive is enough to push you over that edge and to figure out the reasons and the process to go ahead and do what's ever required to contribute back. Another good thing, another good reason to contribute back is that it really awards the company when they're contributing back to open source processes and projects, they're getting street cred, they're getting some community goodwill. And in a lot of ways, in a lot of times, that goodwill is incredibly important. We'll talk about some ways in which that touches real world things, but just having the community that you are dependent upon 
liking you and considering you a good neighbor, someone who is really, really interested in helping the project grow and succeed, that will carry you through a lot of ways. That will carry you through a lot of possible missteps as you make that open source journey inside. If the community knows that you're not just using them as like serfs, you know, out in the fields doing the tilling for you, then they'll be willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. And that can go a long way in improving the morale of the company, but also your reputation, your credibility, not only in the open source community, but among your clients and with your competitors. Another very important thing, and I know a number, number of people have touched on it, is that it really allows you to attain and retain really, really good talent. I don't think anyone will deny the fact that some of the best people who are you know, developers and coders and contributors are doing so by open source because it's, it's tapping a drive inside of them. A lot of, the people, a lot of the reasons why people contribute their volunteer time is because it scratches a niche. It fulfills a need to them. In a lot of ways, people who are open source contributors are artists. And what they want to do is, is, is share their skills, share their craft with like-minded people. So these are the kind of people that you want in your IT department. These are the kind of people that you want in your marketing department, in your graphics department, in your long-term strategy department. These are the people that you want to hire and maintain. And by having a successful open source contribution policy and process inside of your company, you will have your pick of, 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 of excellent open source developers and contributors out there. Another reason that we see an awful lot nowadays is that obviously, no matter what open source project you use, it's not going to do everything for you. There are going to be some things that don't quite fit in with your environment, some additions, modifications, and things that, need, that you need to make. And that will be a little side fork inside of yourself, okay? Those are expensive and dangerous because as those forks, as those uh, in-house forks start to diverge and, and, and migrate away from the regular open source version, you're missing out on software enhancements, uh, performance enhancements, things of that nature. And after a period of time, it's no longer even open source project that you're working on. It's an in-house project that happened to have some heritage a long, long time ago in the DNA that's an open source project. That is a very, very bad, dangerous thing to do, and it really isn't long-term strategically viable for companies out there. If you are consuming software, and if, if, and if part of your company is dependent upon that, you really owe it to yourselves, your employees, your stockholders, to take control of that, to take control of your own destiny. And when something is being developed and, and uh, created in an external open source community, contributing back to that, being part and parcel of that community allows you to manage your destiny, allows you to, to exert some influence maybe on the processes or feature set that you may want to see in the next release of open source software. Heck, in some uh, open source processes uh, and communities, it's kind of like a pay-to-play kind of environment. So you don't get any say at all unless you are part of the community. So again, being able to have this opportunity to drive things in a way that you weren't able to before, you have to make uh, the, the commitment to do that. Internet standards, I mean, there's been a talk a lot about standards lately um, today and, and in elsewhere. But this is the way that we're seeing a lot of internal collaboration going on as well. And open source processes, by contributing to open source standards, you have to also contribute to the open source projects as well. The two are so tightly aligned that there's really no way of doing one without the other. And finally, at the end of the day, it is a strategic investment in the long-term viability, not only of the company, but also in the open source project that you are dependent upon, okay? If you're not contributing back, then chances are good that your competitors maybe not aren't contributing back. And if nobody contributes back, then you have this open source project that so many people are dependent upon, 
but without the support, without the contribution base, without the healthy, viable, diverse community that real successful open source projects demand. And so by contributing back, you're enabling that strategic investment long term for the project and the company. And also incorporated in that strategic investment is that your employees who are contributing to the open source project, instead of just using it, instead of just you, uh, consuming it, they become more expert in that open source project. They understand it a lot more. They understand the conditions, the requirements, the limitations of that software. And that's an incredible asset that you can have inside of the company that your competitors do not have. At the end of the day, it's all about reducing risk. And especially in the technology area, such as financial services and FinTech, it's all about reducing risk. It's all about removing those possibilities that will either damage you, your clients, or, or, or your employees. One thing I would want to stress, if you're just dipping your toe into the idea of contributing to open source projects, try to focus at least your first initial efforts on those open source projects which are housed under uh, uh, an open source foundation, such as Finos, Finos uh, or Apache, or Oasis. The reason why is because they usually have their IP provenance rules down pretty hard. Okay, if you're getting open source software under a foundation, you can pretty much guarantee that that has gone through the kind of IP provenance that you want to be part of. Okay, just contributing to something on, on GitHub, not saying that it's not a, a good idea or a bad idea, but you may not be sure what the IP provenance of that project could be. Are you sure that's something that you want to bring in a house? I've even seen people just say, oh, it's on GitHub or wherever, for example, therefore it must be open source, without even realizing there isn't even an explicit license in that repo. And if there's no license in that repo, I'm sorry, it's under copy left, uh, it's under copyright, and you really have no rights to it at all. So going under a foundation and using and contributing and being a member of the foundation will really help out. So really, at the end of the day, why aren't you contributing? Yeah, I, I know I've heard all the stories before. It's hard. Uh, we have a really, really uh, in, impressive patent portfolio, and we don't want to risk that. Or, you know, it's really, really difficult for, you know, managing our employees. I mean, how do I manage an employee who's doing some stuff on open source and stuff, stuff inside? But I promise you, I guarantee you, that while you are struggling with these answers, with these questions and these answers, answers that have been created in, in sessions and in uh, seminars and conferences like this, your competition already is. So really, if that's the only thing that drives you is that, hey, everybody else is on that bus, we better jump on too, that's not a bad reason. That's not a bad reason at all. But definitely leverage the help of experts, people that you talk to, network with today, I mean, I know we're at the end of the day, people have families and homes and other things to go to. There's gonna be time for you to network with people outside, okay? Definitely do that. There's a lot of expertise and knowledge available for you. So go out, contribute, have fun, and be part of the open source community because it wants you to be part of it. Thank you. Thank you.